Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted to have you with us here this morning. Maybe this is your first time tuning in and joining us. We extend a warm welcome to you and trust you're blessed with what you hear today. We want to begin with prayer. We want to continue to pray for the direction of this nation. We want to pray for our local community and region. We also want to remember Cornerstone Pentecostal Church and members in particular, and lastly, our brothers and sisters around the world. Maybe you have a special unspoken request. It's a perfect time to make that known unto God. Let's pray together. Father, we love you, we praise you, we adore you. We thank you for the abundance of all things. Father, we pray for the direction of this nation. God, we pray for the influence of the spirit of truth, the word of God and the church of the living God upon the direction of this country. Father, we pray for great Holy Ghost revival. We also pray that you'll continue to open up great doors of utterance and influence here locally in the Spokane area. Father, we also remember Cornerstone Pentecostal Church. We pray that you'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out your favor upon your people. And lastly, our brothers and sisters around the world, we pray that you'll furnish them with a hedge of protection. We ask all these things in the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, and everybody said, Amen have something on my heart this morning. I want to draw your attention to John chapter 7. John chapter 7, and starting in verse number 37, John 7, 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. He that believeth on me, as the scriptures hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. I want to talk to us about the divine flow, the divine flow. <coughs> Excuse me. In the book of Acts chapter number two, the Bible talks about the spirit of God being poured out upon all flesh. Theologically, in our anthropomorphic description of that, we understand that it is a um, it is described as a vertical. It is a, we, we understand that this outpouring of the Holy Ghost almost takes on a, a vertical, um, a vertical approach. When we, when we think of how this is being done with the spirit of God being poured out on all flesh, it's from heaven to earth. It's from supernatural to natural. It's from, um, it's from the spirit to human beings. It's, it's, it's a vertical. It appears to be a vertical um, outpouring. But here in John chapter number seven, it's not a vertical outpouring. It is a horizontal. It is a linear flow of the Holy Ghost. And if I understand this, if I could, if I could describe it this way, theologically, we, we receive the spirit of God and that would definitely that would definitely qualify the vertical. We receive the Holy Ghost from heaven to earth, from God to us. That appears to be a vertical flow. But here in John chapter number seven, it talks about rivers of living water out of our belly. Now that we have been recipients of the vertical, we now can operate or be used as a conduit, if you please, so that the Holy Ghost can flow horizontally. And I want to talk to us about the divine flow. The Spirit of God is already poured out on all flesh. It's already there. It's already, if I could use this word, it's already a 
constant. It is already dynamically, it is a constant. Anywhere you go, the Spirit of God is there. It's already been poured out upon all flesh. But what we're really interested in is how can we have the divine flow that is flowing horizontally. And this is where my relationship with God through my consecration and dedication and now my relationships horizontally. This is the missing piece of the puzzle in the divine flow, not just in my relationships in my home, maybe with my family, my wife, my children, but more importantly and more specifically to this devotional this morning, I'm talking about relationships among God's people. When people come into our assembly and if you're, if you're watching this and you go somewhere else and people walk into uh, your assembly, what do they feel? What do they sense? What, what can the human spirit perceive? We've had many people that have said, you know, as soon as I walked in the door, I pulled into the parking lot or I walked into the sanctuary, I sense God's spirit. And then when they connected with uh, the membership here, they connected with people that attend this, uh, this congregation, they, I felt God. I felt God in the building. I felt God when I uh, came in contact with a hostess or an usher or people in the congregation. This greatly interests me, this divine flow. And this, this is something that is described by Jesus. This is theologically accurate, that there is a vertical flow and then there is a horizontal flow. And that horizontal flow is what we're calling the divine flow. And I think that the more that we can understand some of the principles and the dynamics that have to be in place in our lives, we can increase that flow. I'm not interested in decrease. I'm not interested in elimination, obviously. I'm interested in increasing the divine flow. One of the things um, that I think is the preeminent, and I, these, are, these are my ABC, one, two, three, um, just a way of enumerating this here this morning. You may have your own list. But I think the most important thing is for us to walk in the Holy Ghost. I think that when you walk in the Holy Ghost, it automatically calibrates, it automatically designates, it automatically is prepared for this kind of outflow, for lack of a better term, an outflow. When I walk in the Holy Ghost and I, I sense God's presence and I'm walking in the Word of God and I'm walking in personal consecration, that is already a preparation for outflow. But there's other things beyond that I think that are critical to this. Number one, and or number two, and extremely important, is forgiveness. Forgiveness was the most often talked about subject when Jesus described our Lord's prayer, that which is in heaven is now on earth. And he talked about, after he talked about that, he talked about, for if you forgive not your brother his trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive you your trespasses. You just stop the flow. We are the medium, we are, we are the medium, we are the conduit, we are the vessels in which that which is vertical, that which is invisible is flowing through and is manifested in the horizontal. It's manifested in relationships. Not just my wife, not just my children. There are too many relationships that we become familiar with in a human sense where we, we really don't even need the spirit anymore. You know, that's just old Joe and ah, don't worry about them. That's just that's just brother brother John and sister Sue and and we just we we just we just become familiar with those kind of relationships where people are. We need to understand those are God's people. That's God's child. They still need to be handled with the greatest amount of respect 
and they are worthy with the best that we have. We're talking about the divine flow. Walking in the Holy Ghost is number one. Number two, forgiveness. Forgiveness. Hanging on to things stops the flow. And it will not only stop the flow on the horizontal, I believe it will restrict the flow to the vertical if we are not walking in forgiveness. You know, there's just some people that just like a good fight every once in a while, I think. You know, they just have to have something to focus, to, to be a vent for, for these kinds of a thing. I want to tell you, God will deliver you. God will heal you, whatever the case may be. God will help you get over that. God will help you cut off that part of your nature so that we can take more of what we're sensing in the vertical and allowing more of it to flow in the horizontal into our interpersonal relationships. I will close with this. I heard a story one time. Um, from a great man of God gave this illustration. He talked about two families that lived on the same country road. They used to walk to church together, um, apostolic church on a country road. They walked to church together and their families walked together. And one day it was reported that the family that lived furthest down the road, their son had touched um, a young girl in this other family inappropriately. It got so bad that this young boy actually uh, went to prison uh, for a while. And it caused that little country church to fracture. People that, that took the boy's side and his family side sat on one side and on the other side of the church were people that took the, the young girl's side and her family sides sat on the other side of the church. And it absolutely stopped the flow of revival, stopped the flow of interpersonal relationships. It got ugly. It was a horrible, horrible time. In time, uh, this young man came home from prison and he came out, he squared his shoulders. He felt like all this was blown way out of proportion to begin with. And, he tried to accept it the best that he could. He was hurt. There was a lot of things that were said. There were a lot of things that were inferred because of what happened to the church. There was no more flow in this congregation. And to make a long story even shorter, one day after this had gone on for a while, the mother of this young girl stepped across the aisle and approached the mother of this young man and said, I want you to forgive me. I've held on to some things way too long and I miss your friendship and I want things to be the way they used to be. And it started a chain reaction of communication, of forgiveness and healing in that congregation. Right before this had happened, this young man had begun to experience a very weird form of paralysis in his upper body. He was paralyzed from in his upper torso. People were wondering what was happening. After this forgiveness had started to flow inside this congregation, one morning, the mother of this young man was making biscuits in the kitchen. She felt something somebody stepped behind her and it was her son she turned around he said hi mom and she said how are you doing today and he said mom i'm completely healed i'm no longer paralyzed i feel like god has healed me and that's what had happened there was an incredible healing took place this young man was no longer paralyzed what had happened what had happened was somebody stepped across the aisle and started a chain reaction, communication that led to forgiveness. And it opened up the divine flow. Maybe I'm talking to somebody here today that you need to start the process that will bring about healing and restoration and begin the process of the divine flow. 
God bless you. Thank you for joining us here this morning. We're looking forward to seeing you tomorrow.